So here's a quick story for you. When the awesome delivery man finally delivered the Remora, a diver's watch from newly established microband Temporal Watches, it was delivered literally the day before I went on a recent camping trip with a few mates to the awesome Pembrokeshire coast in Wales. So I thought, well, why not take the Remora to Wales so I could film my walk around there? So after a seven hour journey from North Yorkshire to South West Wales, we finally reached awesome St David, officially the UK's smallest city, and we set upon our way along the rugged cliffs of the beautiful Pembrokeshire coast path. And little did I know that when I reached the RNLI St David's lifeboat station near the town of Rosson, some 10 kilometers into a 20 kilometer walk, that I would bump into no other than the Prince and Princess of Wales, Wills and Kate. Wills being the elder son of King Charles III and Diana, Princess of Wales, heir apparent to the British throne, and Kate, now Her Royal Highness, the Princess of Wales, and man were they both totally, totally cool. Though I'm not sure about the non-micro the future king had wrapped around his wrist. Anyway, back to the Remora, and today we're taking the macro lens to the Remora from Florida-based temporal watches as we try and examine every aspect of this watch as I always try to do. And stick around as I take the Remora to the Pembrokeshire coast in Wales to test run this micro so you can see this watch in and around the stunning coastal scenery of Wales here in the United Kingdom in my usual walk around at the end of my vid. As ever, it's great to have you here. But before we do anything else, let's take a look at the spec of the Remora, all in the next 90 seconds. Temporal Watches is a recently launched microband based in the city of Dunedin, which is a city on Florida's Gulf Coast in the USA. Now, Temporal Watches began its journey in early 2023 with a vision to blend the beauty of ocean life with the precision of timekeeping. It was founded by Alexander King, an ocean-loving horologist who has made it his mission to craft high-quality timepieces that pay tribute to the intriguing marine life of the ocean, while at the same time wanting the timepieces to be accessible in terms of price. And where better than Dunedin in Florida to be really inspired by marine life? The city is home of the Honeymoon Island, the number one state park in Florida, and the island boasts clear emerald green waters with baby powder-like sandy beaches on the Gulf of Mexico. And their first creation, the Remora, is a testament to that philosophy. Remora, of course, being a slender marine fish which attaches itself to large fish by means of a sucker on top of the head. And if you catch this video on the first couple of weeks of October 2023, then the status of this watch is that it's a pre-Kickstarter launch. And if you catch this, vid a month or so later or in the future, I'm hoping that the Kickstarter launch was indeed successful. And just to reiterate what was said in a theatrical and 
kind of melodramatic 90 second spec, the remora I measured came in at 12.8mm thick, 40mm in diameter, 47mm lug to lug, 20mm at the lug with this 316L stainless steel bracelet tapering down to 18mm at its milled clasp. Now the case is made from 316L stainless steel, is brushed and sports this lovely polished chamfered edging all the way from lug to lug on the left hand side of the case and note how the case bulges out on the right hand side to what feels like should be crown guards towards that crown and it forms these two what feels like scalloped edges on the right hand side of the case. From the face, the right hand side of the case adds a bit of bulk and this is a 40mm case but from the 9 o'clock position of the case to the outside edge of the crown I measured in at 44.5mm but I actually kind of like the look of that right hand side of the case from its side. It looks very smooth in contrast to the knurled edging of that bezel and that unidirectional bezel for me is really cool. The knurled edging is sloped and in high polish complementing the high polish numerals on that bezel. Speaking of which you've got numerals every 10 minutes, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 with 5 minute markers in between and a 15 minute countdown with the inverted triangle at its default 12 o'clock position sporting a loom pip and this is set against what I can only describe as neither polished nor brushed bezel which reminds me very much of the bezel on a Rolex Yachtmaster. From the side profile it actually has a very low and dome profile, very sleek in my opinion and its slim design means that you can easily slip it under a shirt, cuff or jacket although when turning that bezel that flattened design means you literally grip it from the top using the grip of the protruding numerals to rotate it rather than the grip of the slope knurled edging but that's fine for me personally. Now onto that dial and this particular model is blue wave sunburst which fades into black towards that inner bezel. The dial itself is textured to symbolise the ocean current, I guess with the contours varying in narrowness to give this design a lot of depth. It has the outline of the remora between the pinion and the date complication which for me is the standout element in terms of design on this watch and complements the contours and the sunburst colour effect of that dial. I really really like it, it works so well with the sunburst blue fading into black, a really nice touch to give focus to that remora outline. The Tempora logo below the 12 at first looks on the large side for me but it's kind of grown on me. It's high polished too, much like the baton hour markers, all high polished less the loom centre of each baton and with a taper on each towards the centre of that dial. Beaver's teeth at the 12 o'clock and a take complication at the 6, black font with a white background, highly polished perimeter and for me really does look the part. The hands are cathedral hands sporting some geometric details that mimic stained glass, both hour and minute hands quite sleek, a slightly oversized hour hand with its needle like tip landing approximately 1.5mm away from the hour markers and the minute hand slightly slimmer in design landing about 60% into those indices. Now the second hand sports an arrowhead about 4mm from its tip and its counterbalance giving this uh, bit of stability to the overall look and feel of those hands and it all sits under this dome sapphire crystal with anti-reflective treatment. You won't have much of a problem with edgeability either and in certain angles of light that AR treatment just won't let you down. The crown at 3 o'clock is a screw down crown, 5.9mm in diameter and has the remora engraved into it and just to note that this watch is water resistant up to 200 meters, which is perfect if you want to dive into the deep and head towards the depths or go scuba diving or you just want to go to the local swimming baths to pretend that you're in the Pacific, this water resistance will serve you quite well. The loom is a standard loom on the hands and on the indices in blue which for me illuminates the remora and kind of a stunning shade of blue in my own opinion. As ever there's not too much I can really say about the loom um, as it really does speak for itself. The bracelet is 316L stainless steel, now I measure it in at 20mm at the lug and it tapers down to 18mm at this milled clasp. It's an oyster style bracelet brushed on the outer links and polished in the middle giving you that classic oyster look. The clasp is a milled clasp double lock and has a polished interior with a temporal logo and the abbreviated logo on the clasp itself engraved with another remora alongside it and now it's a fairly large clasp if you purely consider this watch as an everyday wear so a lot of surface area to develop some desk rash but obviously a 
good secure clasp that offers you plenty of adjustment when you're taking it out into the ocean and you're wearing a wetsuit. The movement is a Miyota Nano 15 movement, part of the 9000 series, 24 joules, 28,800 beats per hour, 42 hours power reserve, hand windable, hacking seconds, and a highly desirable uh, movement in the microbrand world, and as we know, Miyota's signature ultra thin premium mechanical movement. And let's face it, this movement just won't let you down. And that movement is contained behind this superb exhibition case back. Again, as I reiterate in all my reviews, it's no secret that I'm a big fan of exhibition case backs. This one is screwed down and here the rotor has a design that is in sync with the dial of this watch, with those contours stylizing that rotor. And you have the brand name on the perimeter of the case back with the slogan, make your own era, which I guess is the rallying cry and slogan of temporal watches. On my seven and a half inch wrist it wears, well what can I say, it wears as you'd expect it to wear, pretty decent. You won't have any problems with the comfortability of this oyster bracelet and this clasp gives you plenty room of micro adjustment so this watch actually wears pretty pretty well. 40mm case diameter really is becoming my favourite width of divers watches and works quite well with the 47mm lug to lug in proportion to my seven and a half inch wrists. It has male end links too which adds a bit more onto my wrist and I personally think it looks pretty cool overall too. The bezel is standout if not unique and I really like the slope design of that knurled edging and this respective high polish and I think it just adds a bit of touch of class to this. The dial is also very much standout and looked great as I took it to the rugged shores of the Pembrokeshire coastline in Wales. That blue really does remind me of the ocean and the contours on that dial is the perfect nod to the sea and its currents. It felt pretty lightweight too. I weighed it in at 151 grams, which is pretty good for a tall steel diver's watch adjusted for a seven and a half inch wrist. And that's largely thanks to the choice of movement, meaning that this watch can be pretty slim in its design. Under 13 millimeters I measured it in, including the dome crystal. Um, and it's pretty slim for what seemingly looks like a fairly bulky diver's watch. Now I wore this around with shorts and a tee around Wales as it was absolutely spanking hot that day but I think that the classiness of the bezel and the elements of high polish coupled with a pretty nice dial design means that you could get away with wearing this as a dress watch if a divers forward slash dressy watch is indeed what you're looking for. In terms of price, the Remora has an RRP of $450, that's around about 370 UK pounds sterlings or 425 euros in today's market. Um, however, the Kickstarter launch will see the first 45 backers get it for 375 USD or 310 UK pound sterlings or around 355 euros, with a second batch of 45 backers at 400 USD, 330 UK pound sterlings, 377 ish euros in today's market. So, as ever with Kickstarters, get that super early bird rate if you can. Get in with the socials and keep tab of that launch date. Overall, I really do love it when a new microbrand enters the scene. Temporal watches seems to have all the right elements in place, I think, to be successful. Their owner, Alexander King, is a massive watch enthusiast, and Temporal Watches itself is born in a place whereby it's filled with the creative inspiration that steers this brand and its design ethos. The Remora is a fantastic first edition of a watch brand that wants to share that inspiration of the ocean, and the Remora's bold and modern design feels like it would be fantastic for exploring the depths of the sea, or scuba diving, or for me, just wearing it for everyday wear. The fantastic contouring on the textured dial, coupled with a sunburst blue that fades to black uh, as the colour grades towards the bezel, gives this watch something completely different to the hundreds of dives out there in the wild.
platform. Yeah, please. Do a um, screen cap of the video.